Chapter 2, Part 1, The Earth Gets a Moon A Really, Really Weird Moon By Seth Lyon The Draco fleet was always on the move. Always expanding. They were ceaselessly searching for new planets to turn into the vast farms, and mining colonies that they needed to feed their race, and to build, and maintain ships, weapons, and all the rest of their enormous infrastructure. 365 million years ago, two Draco brothers, piloting a scout ship of the reptilian fleet, stumbled across our very own Earth. They determined that our Earth would be a very good candidate for a livestock planet. It had enough carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to be livable for their race, although the Chakar would do a few things later on to pump these levels up, and it was in a rich, primordial state where there was currently no competition, or existing predators to prey on their livestock. There was one problem though, there was no tidal system, something that, is crucial for the rapid evolution of life. In order to establish a tidal system which would bring life out of the oceans, and establish better conditions for the flourishing of land creatures, and also, because it would make an excellent observation post, the Chakar imported, and placed in a precise orbit, a hollowed-out planetoid that we know very well. The more modern science learns about the moon, the less they can explain its existence. There are various theories in the mainstream, all of which are fraught with holes, none of which can explain all the strange things observed about the moon. Among the various baffling facts are these. The moon is much bigger than it should be. With a diameter that, is 27% the size of the Earth, it is far, far bigger than any other observable planetary satellite in our solar system the biggest of which is only 5% the size of its parent planet. The moon is much lighter than it should be, given its size. The mathematics of the placement of the moon, in relationship to the Earth, and Sun, are fantastically precise. It is placed in exactly the perfect place to help sustain life through its influence on the tides, and the fact that, it is the perfect size to completely eclipse the sun is a mathematical impossibility unless you factor in intelligent design. Its rotation is perfectly synchronized with the Earth's, so that we only ever see one side of it, meaning it rotates on its axis once every 27.3 days, and also orbits the Earth once every 27.3 days. It appears to be hollow. Data indicates that its internal density is far less than its external density, and seismic equipment has shown clearly that, upon being impacted, the moon literally rings like a giant gong. This was first observed during the Apollo missions when the command module crashed into the moon, and it has been tested repeatedly by NASA, since then. One of the NASA scientists involved in these tests, Ken Johnstone, had this to say. The moon not only rang like a bell, but the whole moon wobbled in such a precise way that it was almost as though it had gigantic hydraulic damper struts inside it. Underneath the accumulated space dust on the surface, the moon is made largely out of metal. Countless pieces of evidence from independent astronomers and NASA scientists has shown that there are dense layers of metal beneath the surface, including pure iron and pure titanium so pure that they could not have formed under natural conditions, chromium, and yttrium. Also the floors of the craters on the moon are convex, not concave as you would expect, and the craters themselves are way too shallow for their width, this shallow crater with a convex floor would be the result of an asteroid blasting the surface dust off of a rigid metal sphere. Then there are other craters which scientists have been unable to find the bottom of, which are believed to be entrances into the interior. Strange lights, and objects have been recorded on our moon for thousands of years. The classical Greek philosopher, mathematician, and scientist, Plato, reported anomalous lights on the moon sometime around 400 BC. In 1787, legendary astronomer, Sir William Herschel, 
recorded strange lights traveling across the dark lunar surface. Every single NASA mission to the Moon has involved encounters with UFOs, and observations of colossal artificial structures on the dark side, which have been covered up by NASA, the photographs airbrushed, but which many astronauts have, since come forward with first-person accounts of. I'll stop there, but there are many other unexplained facts about the Moon. Of course all of these mysteries are resolved by accepting the fact that the Moon is an artificially constructed metal object that was brought here from elsewhere. As Occam's razor states, the simplest answer is usually the truth, no matter how strange it may seem. The Moon was the first base of operations for the Draco, and it has been conquered, reconquered, upgraded, and repurposed many times since then by different races that have had an interest in our system. In our present time the Moon serves as a command center for this entire arm of the Milky Way, a demilitarized zone with many bases, both on the surface, and inside, which are inhabited by representatives from many different civilizations, even ones that have been enemies for eons. It also houses the computer system that broadcasts the artificial third density matrix onto the Earth. A brief overview of the next few hundred million years. I'm going to cover a huge span here, because, frankly, I just have to do that sum in this story, or it would be a quadrillion pages long. There were obviously countless dramas, and wars, and discoveries, rises and falls in consciousness, etc. during such a long time span so this next bit is painted in very broad strokes. 300 million years ago, thanks to the draconian breeding programs in cooperation with the helpful forces of evolution, the first reptiles began to emerge on Earth. 252 million years ago, the Permian-Triassic extinction event, the Earth's atmosphere is starting to have a higher percentage of oxygen than the Draco desire, and their various breeding programs are beginning to spin out of control as the rich environment of the Earth, and the forces of evolution support the propagation of many, many species. The Draco scientists crash an asteroid into the planet in order to bump up CO2 levels in the atmosphere, and also to wipe out the weaker species from their gene pool leaving only the strongest who will eventually evolve into the dinosaurs. 227 million years ago, the dinosaurs have arrived. Many of the aggressive species, the meat-eaters, are used for cross-breeding into, denoid, soldiers, and slaves. While the vegetarians are left alone to evolve into larger, and larger sources of protein. 200 million years ago, the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event that pesky rich plant life on Earth is yet again raising the oxygen percentage to uncomfortable levels. The Chakar hit the Earth with yet another asteroid in an attempt to wipe out the various emerging mammalian species that, are competing with the dinosaurs for resources. Aware of this persistent meddling, and dedicated to nurturing all forms of life in the universe, and also, because some of them were aware of the importance of the soul of Mother Earth, a branch of the Patal, the ancient builder race, settled here at this time, and built a base in the area of what is now Antarctica, the ruins of which have been excavated relatively recently. The emergence of early intergalactic civilizations, there are many well-developed intergalactic civilizations in the universe at this point. There is trading going on between the systems of Orion, Sirius, parts of Lyra, and Draco, Vega, and the Pleiades, and many civilizations have started to check out our local star system as well, resulting in some skirmishes with the Draco forces. Those early colonists in Lyra, who, had shunned technology, and formed more primitive tribal societies, as well as other races that had developed unaware of their galactic neighbors, are generally left alone by the more advanced civilizations who, for the most part, follow a policy of non-intervention. However, some of these worlds were taken over by reptilian factions who, had no such scruples. 
The populations of these unfortunate worlds were enslaved, and experimented on with genetic manipulation, much like the situation on our own world. All this diversity, and evolution coupled with the genetic manipulation programs of the Draco has resulted in a profusion of breeds, and cross-breeds, a cornucopia of races in the universe, human, reptilian, canine, avian, feline, amphibious, insectoid, and more. Not to mention the various races that have evolved in their consciousness to the point that they don't use any sort of physical body, and exist simply as a union of love, light. Most of the reptilian races, and sub-races who are not traveling through space live in, or around Draco, Orion, and Sirius, though they have many, many colonies, and farm worlds all across the universe, including Earth. Most are still androgynous, yet, because of the emergence of such incredible genetic variation some are now sexed. Most are still self-serving, and aggressive, but some have DNA, that has been altered enough to enable them to develop spiritually, and are neutral, or even benevolent. The Alpha Draconis branch in particular have evolved quite a bit, and many have increased their vibration to a 5D state and joined in brotherhood with other 5D races. From 200 million years ago to about 22 million years ago our universe was, in general, a place of thriving development in culture, arts, trade, science, and spirituality. In a time span that vast there were, of course, countless ups, and downs, wars, atrocities, and struggles but you could say that the overall trend was one relative peace, 